What I would like to do today is uh, providing an introduction to the therapeutic program I developed over the last uh, about 20 years for a, a really challenging psychiatric disorder, obsessive compulsive uh, disorder. So let me show you a brief outline about uh, the key topics of my presentation. Uh, first, I, I would like to share with you the therapeutic effects of mindfulness and compassion uh, practice in changing some uh, specific uh, cognitive biases and mechanisms. Sorry, I activated the, the time. Okay. okay. Um, and mechanism that normally people, uh, normally people affected by OCD have. Then we will try to understand the rational and uh, cultural and the scientific framework of MBCT for our OCD. I will also illustrate uh, uh, the key features in the clinical perspective uh, of the MBCT for OCD program. And then we move uh, to briefly show you the basic uh, components themes, contents, and some practices uh, of this therapeutic program. And finally, I'm going to show you some preliminary data about uh, the outcome of this uh, therapeutic uh, program. Maybe you all know this, uh, this image. So the first news I would like to give you in this presentation is that uh, everybody in this period has become a bit OCD from uh, all the laws and rules uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, we have to perform several um, measures in order to prevent the risk of contamination. And this is really interesting in order to better understand the normality and the adaptive role of OCD, as we will see soon. So these are in, in several ways uh, OCD behaviors. Um, let me start with some basic um, uh, clinical and epidemiological information about OCD, which is needed to introduce the topics of this session. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a chronic and often severe psychiatric disorder. It is characterized by recurrent uh, intrusive and distressing thoughts, images, or impulses, which we call obsessions and uh, repetitive mental or overtaxes, which are called compulsions or uh, neutralizing behaviors, which are performed to reduce or remove the stress and anxiety caused by obsessive thoughts and to prevent any perceived harmful uh, consequences. Uh, we know that uh, about two or three percent of people worldwide in the general population suffer from this disorder. It has been estimated that more than 60 million people worldwide and about three to five million people only in the United States are living with OCD at any one time. More than half of the patients with OCD, about 54 uh, percent in the United States receive no treatment at all. This is important to know because uh, we have to sensitize, uh, sensitize population and media about uh, the treatments available for this problem. OCD is the fourth most common psychiatric disorder following phobias, substance use disorders, and depression. And the 10th leading of disability in the world. And this is a problem that leads to a high health care costs for the national health system and a significant impairment in quality of life in its several areas. We also know that it costs uh, about 8 billion a year just for the US economy. So, we definitely need effective uh, and cost-efficient uh, treatments for this problem. There is um, an interesting and funny quote by Mark Twain, 
that is helpful in understanding the life of people suffering from OCD. There has been much tragedy in my life, at least half of it, uh, of it uh, actually happened. This is an excellent summary of uh, what life uh, is like for people suffering from, uh, from OCD. So, um, OCD is a really extreme heterogeneous uh, problem, disorder, and in fact, uh, they have uh, so many different uh, uh, behaviors, different attitudes, beliefs, uh, symptoms. And uh, so considering this uh, heterogeneity, a key question, in applying a treatment model for this kind of disorder is uh, what is common to all obsessive individuals. So what is the features that all obsessive individuals uh, share? And uh, if the clinical features and the phenomenolo phenomenology of this uh, psychological condition are uh, more carefully observed, it becomes clear that a general, a general common feature in OCD patients, in particular severe ones, is a dysfunctional relationship with their entire private experience, in particular with uh, sensory perception. And thoughts. In particular, they have difficulty in uh, accepting harmless and potentially useful stimuli or experiences, thoughts, feelings, physical sensation or sensorial experiences, and the uh, discomfort activated by them. So normally it's anxiety, disgust, or shame. Furthermore, it's really difficult for them to prevent or delay a reaction toward the specific stimuli that activates their problem. They also have a hyper uh, activation of the self-protective system of the brain in absence of a real danger. Self-protective system is a particular a specific uh, uh, affect uh, regulation system, uh, which is designed to stimulate and activate uh, defensive behaviors such as uh, uh, fight and flight and freeze uh, uh, behaviors or uh, reactions or uh, to activate uh, the defensive emotions such as uh, anxiety or uh, disgust and so on. So it's a really important uh, system but uh, the problem is that in OCD like also in, in other psychopathological uh, disorder but um, in particular in OCD is overactivated. Um, this is a scary image that probably many people with checking OCD have when they think they have forgotten to lock the door. This seems quite funny, but not for people suffering from OCD, believe me. So, um, if we carefully observe people with OCD, we can notice that all of them have a, a different level, at a different level, a dysfunctional feeling of mistrust. I mean, self-mistrust. And I, I think that this is a, one of the main feature of, uh, of people with OCD. Um, in particular, uh, this mistrust or distrust is uh, about some important function of consciousness. They have distrust in perception, they have uh, distrust in memory, they are not sure that what they, uh, they, they their memory is it's, uh, true, for example, but they have a very good memory normally. They have uh, uh, distrust uh, in uh, intentions, N not everybody, but uh, uh, this is a really a paradoxical issue. They fear doing something that is always uh, uh, 
the, the, the opposite of their real intentions. And that's why they never do what they fear doing. This is an interesting, interesting paradox. So uh, OCD, this, that's why OCD can be conceptualized as a trust disorder. And uh, individual distrust all the functions that give us the best possible relationship with the reality. And this is the reason because the mind takes over. There is a, um, a wonderful quote by Frank Crane, an American writer and journalist, which summarizes the problem of trust in OCD when he say, you may be deceived if you trust too much, but you will live in torment if you don't trust enough. And actually, this is the life of uh, individuals with OCD. So what, is, uh, what are the most effective treatments currently available for this, uh, for this challenging disorder? We know that the cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is considered now the, the gold standard in the treatment of OCD, both in children and adults. And, uh, also, in particular, exposure and response prevention, ERP, uh, is the most effective therapeutic intervention for OCD. We know that about 75% uh, of patients treated with this uh, method improve uh, uh, significantly and normally maintain the outcome, the outcome of whole uh, Pharmacotherapy is also a helpful treatment for OCD, in particular, certain uh, antidepressant. We have a, a 40 to 60 res percent of response rate. But, there is a but. We also have uh, to honestly notice that uh, there are some important uh, limits in the above cited treatment. In fact, we know that a substantial number of patients um, who suffer from OCD do not respond well to the standard protocols of the CBT and the antidepressant uh, uh, medication. And uh, we also know that in the longer term, pharmacotherapy is associated uh, with a high relapse rate when they stop taking their, uh, their medicine about 80, 90, 90% of people relapse. Furthermore, a lot of people uh, who enter ERP, uh, ERP uh, intervention tend to drop out before the end of the treatment, about 25%, because of the highly anxiety evoking nature of, uh, of this treatment. We also know that ERP is not very uh, effective with the individu individuals suffering from obsessive or ruminative thoughts, but without uh, overt compulsion. And also in patients with, uh, with poor or uh, absent insight, and in people with severe depressive syndrome. So, given these limits or, uh, of effective treatments, over the course of many years, I've tried with uh, curiosity and commitment to find the uh, answers to the following question. The first is what more can we uh, realistically do to help people with OCD who have yet to find enough relief from this disabling disorder? Probably more than 50% of patients with this problem. Then uh, the second question is what therapeutic means, techniques, and uh, approaches uh, we could implement in order to improve, strengthen, and or effectively uh, integrate with the current treatment. And the third question is uh, what, uh, what features of the disorder do we still need to fully understand in both clinical and uh, uh, anthropogenetic terms. And the last question is, uh, what common and transversal factors characterize all types of OCD, 
and which interventions can be effective in treating each of them, considering the extreme heterogeneity of the disorders, symptomatology, and, uh, and uh, phenomenology. So what I had presented so far are some of the reasons we have to understand uh, what we can do in order to enhance and increase the efficacy of the current OCD treatments and what kind of new tools can be helpful for people who do not respond to the available therapies. So this is why uh, we can include mindfulness training in the treatment of OCD. And let me show you how and why uh, more, uh, more in detail. Uh, if we take into account the really famous definition of mindfulness by John Kabat-Zinn, uh, we can realize how the state of mindfulness is different or even the opposite of the oxidative states of mind. Uh, mindfulness is the awareness that emerges through paying attention on purpose. OCD people have uh, attentional deficits. So, for them it's really difficult to pay attention to what is not connected with their problem and could this confirm or overcome their fears. In the present, OCD, people with OCD are almost always in the past. They ask uh, what I could have done or uh, in the future, what I could do if I if I don't, if I don't wash, I don't check, and so on. Non-judgmental. So OCD people constantly judge themselves for their behavior, what they feel, and what they think, or uh, what they what they think. So uh, OCD can be defined for this reason as a state of. Uh, a state of a severe mindlessness. So this is the opposite concept of, uh, of mindfulness. Using a, a mindfulness-based perspective, we can say that uh, OCD symptoms and biases can be defined as a set of mindfulness deficits. In fact, for example, rumination is a typical mindless mental behavior since, uh, since the, the thoughts come up over and over again, an individual is uh, unable, incapable to, to stop and just to observe the thought for what it is. Furthermore, uh, we know that people affected by OCD also show attentional bias for threat. So they have a selective attention to threatening stimu stimuli but they are not really aware of the current experience and are unable to, to switch attention to another focus. And because of their attentional biases, OCD patients are not able to attend to information that would disconfirm and overcome their fears. Furthermore, you know that several patients with OCD have a problem called thought action fusion or thought event fusion, which is a, a cognitive bias in which a fusion or confusion between thought and action arises. And uh, in this condition, uh, the individual believes that uh, having an unwanted thought concerning, concerning harm increases the risk of actual harm occurring to someone or uh, the person believes that uh, having the unwanted interested thought means that uh, he or she uh, really wish to, to carry out the bad and unacceptable action. Another core problem for a service individual is acceptance. For them, it is very difficult or often impossible to accept several experiences uh, connected with their problems. Intrusive or obsessive thoughts, imagine and fear the consequences, or uh, not preventing harm, or doing things in the wrong way, disturbing emotions such as anxiety, guilt, shame, disgust, 
or physical uh, or physical sensation. Therefore, OCD individuals are not able to accept potentially normal and non-threatening experiences. This is an important, an important point. And uh, a wonderful, a wonderful way, a wonderful way to. Sorry, I checked the time. A wonderful way to explain the level of suffering in humans is the Buddhist equ equ equation of suffering, in which a suffering is the product of a pain times resistance. So uh, it means that uh, the more we resist, the more we increase pain, and therefore the more we create suffering. In fact, people with OCD tend to react uh, over and over again in order to get rid of uh, a particular form of a harmless pain, which are thoughts, emotions, sensations. And in this way, they increase pain, pain which uh, uh, eventually becomes suffering. So OCD is a particular form of suffering. Suffering is the result uh, mm. of our inability to accept things as they are. And uh, Another mindless uh, behavior in OCD is, uh, or attitude is uh, what I call the self-invalidation of the perceptive uh, experience, in which the individual is incapable to validate, uh, so to give values to the, to the memories of what they have actually seen or heard in a critical situation connected with OCD. So if you are not able to give value to our senses in any situation, the mind takes over and also the doubt takes over. And uh, remember that the mind often lies and the OCD mind very often lies. So it's uh, absolutely logical that this biases, but there are also other biases that we have no time here to explain lead to the uh, development of uh, obsessive symptoms or an obsessive solution, let's say. In other words, if we had this kind of, of biases and attitudes in our mind, we also develop an OCD problem. So this leads a clinician to wonder how and if it is possible to integrate the current treatments of, for OCD with the third wave approaches, so mindfulness and acceptance-based intervention. In order to deal with these uh, uh, really challenges um, um, with the, the heterogeneity of the disorder and to improve the effectiveness of uh, and the application of already established treatment programs. And uh, We also uh, investigated this issue, the issue of the mindfulness deficit in, in a study um, we, that we published uh, two years ago with a psychology and psychotherapy. And uh, in this study, we, we show it that uh, OCD patients have uh, a significant deficit in mindfulness skills measured with uh, the FFMQ scale by Rutbeer, compared to a, a normal sample control. And uh, this is interesting because this outcome supports the rationale of uh, using mindfulness integrated with CBT with, this, with uh, this kind of disorder. If you are interested in the study, you can, uh, you can send me an email and I would send it to you. Uh, a brilliant and marvelous quote from the Anguttara Nikaya, an ancient, uh, ancient Buddhist text, uh, sum up uh, the effective treatment of OCD uh, when it says, uh, not through actions and not through words, 
do we become free from mental contaminations but seeing and acknowledging them over and over. So, uh, translating in OCD terms, not through rituals, not through reassurances, or nor verbal compulsions, do we become free from obsessions, but just observing those thoughts at a distance and, and without a reaction. So, we already had uh, the, uh, an effective therapeutic uh, uh, therapeutic ther therapy for OCD, but uh, probably not many people uh, knew that. So, um, mindfulness training and, uh, in particular, MDCT for OCD is a program. Uh, has been designed as a comprehensive approach to, to the individual. So it is focused on the person as a whole, and not only on the specific symptoms of the disorder. And this is important in order to have a, a lasting effect with the treatment. Um, so to sum up, um, Individuals with OCD need to learn uh, effective ways to permanently overcome from their cognitive biases. And uh, mindfulness, uh, we know that mindfulness is a state of mind in which uh, individuals uh, pay attention in a particular way, to the present moment, on purpose, and without judgment. And this is the opposite of, the opposite of rumination. That's why mindfulness is a, an uh, anti-ruminative attitude. The first component of mindfulness involves the self-regulation of attention. So people can learn to pay attention in a more healthy and functional way. And uh, through uh, mindfulness training, people are able to develop uh, some uh, metacognitive skills such as the centering and the disidentification, which allow them to become uh, uh, a neutral and a non-reactive observer of their own internal experience. Passion realize uh, uh, these thoughts are not me, or this feeling is not me, or mindfulness leads, uh, mindfulness leads, leads to a significant uh, shift in perspective. Furthermore, uh, through mindfulness, people can have a significant improvement uh, in metacognitive skills, so do not give meanings, for example, to their private experience, and uh, develop um, a more functional sense of uh, responsibility, which is, uh, as you know, so seriously distorted in uh, OCD. Also, through mindfulness, individuals uh, uh, affected by OCD learn to, to prevent useless activation of the self-protection system and uh, allows a stable activation of the soothing system in a harmless situation. The soothing system is, uh, we can say, is the, the opposite uh, system of the, um, the opposite of the, the threat system which is uh, activated when uh, we feel uh, a sense of uh, contentment, a sense of uh, uh, safeness, uh, or sense of trust, you know. Sorry, but I have to check the time and the, my mobile is with off. Okay. We have more time. Um, so, um, mindfulness practice uh, uh, also includes an intensive training in uh, acceptance and uh, in the validation of private experience, and in particular, the senses. We will see how it is, is an important point. And uh, allow the development of a healthy self-trust. 
which is the best, in my opinion, is the best antidote uh, toward uh, toward uh, OCD. So uh, maybe now you can better understand uh, the framework, the framework, the key features, and the rationale of the MCT for uh, uh, for OCD problem. Uh, MCT for OCD developed uh, through an uh, an integration between four main uh, uh, scientific and cultural areas. The first is uh, evolutionary psychology. We, uh, several studies show how uh, obsessive symptoms are basically normal and adaptive defensive responses to threatening stimuli. And uh, in this sense, uh, uh, they are not the real problem in OCD, but a logical consequence of uh, a threatening way to interpret reality. So I think it's very helpful to, uh, to see OCD in terms of uh, evolutionary psychology. Uh, furthermore, neurobiology is also another important component uh, in the development of this model. Uh, in fact, it is now very well, uh, very well established uh, by uh, neurobiological and uh, neuroimaging uh, research that, uh, that the mind can change uh, the brain. So we know that uh, mindfulness training in particular can uh, rewire several circuits and areas in the brain connected with the activation of OCD in an adaptive and a healthy way. In particular, in the prefrontal cortex and uh, in part in the limbic system, um, in the, the amygdala in particular, creating, for example, a, a deactivation of the lower activation of specific areas and circuits which are overactive uh, overactive in OCD. And uh, of course, an MCT for OCD developed uh, through an, an integration between the four, between uh, with uh, integration with uh, CBT. And uh, so in, in this program, there are several important cognitive and behavioral intervention and principles that we will, uh, we will shortly uh, talk about uh, later. And of course, uh, Buddhist psychology is, uh, is a key cultural and scientific area that inspired so many components, uh, principles, and tools of this program, as we have seen uh, previously. And uh, so what are the basic features of this program? Uh, we planned and uh, implemented a specific 11-session MCT format for OCD, in which we try to cover uh, we cover the most important topics for OCD and train participants to overcome uh, their specific deficits. Uh, differently from uh, other mindfulness-based models. MBCT for OCD has been created to uh, provide the, the, to be provided not only group to provide, but also individual sessions as well. And this is important because it is not so easy uh, to form OCD groups. And also some people uh, can have several difficulties uh, with group participation. Um, the program, uh, also includes a unique session with the family members or partners in order to deal with, uh, with some typical environmental roadblocks and collusions with the caregivers. And uh, the duration of the sessions are uh, three hours for the group uh, session and two hours for an individual session. The number of participants uh, ranges from four to 10. 
and uh, the exclusion criteria are almost the same criteria are used uh, in the classical group psychotherapy. You know. So what are the, the, key, the, the key features of this uh, therapeutic model? Uh, that we always have to bear in mind when we implement the program. The first key element is uh, understanding, which means that uh, particularly for the first few sessions of the program, we help patients understand the scope and goals we want to reach with this program. Understanding what mindfulness is, how was to be work, and how mindfulness can be helpful for their disorder. The second key feature is normalizing. Normalizing means uh, helping participants understand that their symptoms are not so pathological and they are not as crazy as they think and why their symptoms are uh, uh, potentially adaptive and functionally defensive behaviors toward perceived, uh, perceived treatment stimuli. In other words, we, we will all behave similarly if, you, if we had their beliefs and biases in our mind. And this is, this is explained in particular in the, in the second session of the program. The third key feature is uh, developing, uh, developing self-trust and self-validation toward toward their internal experience. So thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations. We dedicate two sessions to this uh, uh, theme. The fourth theme, the fourth uh, feature is, uh, of the program is guiding the participant in an intensive training in mindfulness and compassion, which can become uh, um, a type of new habit that can replace uh, the dysfunctional mental habits that people with OCD have created in their minds. This is an, this is an MCT program. So the fifth key feature is cognitive intervention, which is extremely relevant, particularly for helping people understand what is a thought and how to develop a healthy relationship uh, uh, with this, uh, with this uh, harmless, inconsistent, and impermanent mental events. This is what we say to patients. Exposure is also a key therapeutic component in the MCT program, which is a, an attitude and intervention introduced in several, uh, in several gradual ways from the first session and integrated with the mindfulness in order to create as normal and non-threatening as possible way to, to relate to uh, disturbing stimuli and experiences, realizing and discovering that they are just harmless events or objects. The seventh, the last key feature of the program is sharing. In the group format, and almost always for the first time, participants have uh, the opportunity to share uh, their problem with other people affected by the same problem. And they can support each other along the program. This is also a really important aspecific uh, therapeutic component. So uh, what about the teams uh, the themes and contents of the program session. Let me check the time, please. Okay. Um, so the, the first session, as I, I anticipated uh, uh, before, the first session of running is very similar to the first session of the MBSR and the MCT program, since it is an introduction to mindfulness uh, uh, aimed at helping participants uh, understand what mindfulness is, in particular through an experiential mode. 
the second session, help participants understand uh, how OCD works and how mindfulness training can be helpful to change uh, several cognitive mechanisms which uh, activate and maintain the problem. The third session is a unique and original uh, session, which is uh, conducted with family members or partners of participants, but also with participants as well, in order to help them to be more effective in helping their beloved and to prevent several anti-therapeutic attitudes and behavior they often have, such as the giving reassurance or criticizing patients and so on. So it is very helpful to have this kind of session for this patient. The fourth session is dedicated to helping, to helping participants uh, um, better understand the possible origin of their mistrust and starting to develop a real and healthy self-trust. And in the fifth session, uh, we continue to work on trust and um, in particular, participants learn to validate their senses, their perceptive experience, as uh, the first antidote, antidote to pathological doubt and obsessions. The sixth session is uh, particularly important because uh, it's aimed at explaining what is the real nature of thought and how to develop uh, a healthy relationship uh, with their thoughts. So it is an extremely important session for them. In the seventh session, is a, the, uh, in the seventh session, the group uh, discovers the importance of uh, acceptance for OCD problems and learns to cultivate and uh, develop acceptance, in particular through um, through an important practice called the REAL, which is an acronym of uh, four steps to develop, re develop acceptance. The eighth session is characterized by, uh, by several important themes, among them how to develop uh, a mindful doing. Remember that uh, obsessive rituals are mindless behavior since they do not pay attention uh, uh, to, the, to the real effect uh, uh, of their actions and therefore repeat them over and over. And also mindful intentions, uh, that means uh, validating their intentions, which is the best antidote to the, to the fear of doing something wrong or, or, uh, or terrible. But in the eighth session, we also share mindful exposure exercise with participants. The exercise, as explained previously, is, a, is an integration between ERP intervention and mindfulness and the powerful intervention for most participants. The ninth session is dedicated to self-compassion and self-forgiveness through powerful attitudes and feelings, which can act as an uh, effective antidote toward the, the pathological feeling of, uh, of guilt and mistrust and the inflated sense of responsibility. In the 10th session, participants help through introducing several kinds of mindful risks in their life which means doing something that uh, is helpful for their lives, uh, though they have been avoiding it up to that moment because of their fears and because of their OCD. So it's really important in this part of the program, they start to take uh, risks in their life. Risk not connected with OCD, risk about, about their life. So something to, to do outside their, their, their OCD life. And uh, the last station of the program, the 11th, as planned, is a, 
is a one-day one session aimed at reviewing the most important uh, uh, con content and exercise of the program and uh, recognizing the improvements made and uh, learning how to overcome the difficulties still present and uh, motivating the class to keep on going with mindful practice on a regular basis. So, what's the evidence about this program? We have now several studies that show the clinical relevance of mindfulness for OCD, but we also have two specific outcome studies related, related to the to the effectiveness uh, of the MCT for OCD program. The first one was published last year in the Journal of uh, Psychiatric Practice. It is an open trial with uh, 35 patients with uh, OCD uh, measured at uh, half treatment and at post treatment. So, what we are seeing in the study. Um, we observed in this study that also the symptom, you can see the, the green line down uh, that represents the Y box total score, uh, significantly decreases after a half treatment and decreases further at post treatment. And at the same time, the FFMQ a score, so in the, in the up, up part of the uh, upper part of the, of the slide, um, both in the subscales and uh, the total score um, significantly increases after treatment. So there is an interesting uh, inverse correlation between improvement in mindfulness skills and decreasing of uh, of OCD syndrome. And uh, we also noted a significant improvement in depressive symptoms at post treatment. And uh, also a significant improvement in general psychopathological symptoms in different uh, clinical areas measured with, uh, with the SCL90 uh, scale. This is uh, also interesting. And uh, this, is, uh, this is the first uh, randomized controlled trial on the effects of MCT for OCD with a group of uh, 120 OCD patients. Uh, we used three samples of 40 people affected by OCD, placed in three different interventions, psychoeducational group, antidepressant medication group and the uh, MBCT for OCD group. We also investigated uh, uh, all patients at six months six, six month follow-up and they used man magnetic resonance imaging to uh, investigate uh, uh, the neurobiological changes after treatment and follow-up. Uh, we have right uh, submitted in, uh, in this week uh, the, the final paper at, uh, to the, the British Journal of Psychiatry. Uh, the, out the outcome is very interesting, showing a significant improvement both uh, in MCT for OCD group and in antidepressant group. And uh, this outcome was maintained at follow-up. So, I, I really look forward to to see the the study published. Let me take a look to the time. Okay. Good. We are in time. Okay. Um. So here you can see some pictures um, taken from some real MCT for OCD groups. The first in the, in the left uh, is a mindful perception, then mindful walking, compassionate relational mindfulness, practice, and the body scan. Just to 
to see some real, <laughs> the real experience. And uh, I'm happy to introduce you the MCT for OCD manual published last November with Guildford Press, which also includes the audio files of the program's uh, uh, practices. And uh, so I, I would like to show you, show you uh, what is the real effect of MCT for OCD in terms of uh, improvement of self-trust, you know, the individual with OCD is the one on the left, but uh, probably also the subjects on the right side have trained themselves in mindfulness. So they learn a non-reactive attitude. Okay, so this is a real experience. So, um, if you need more information about the model and also about the training in MCT for OCD, please uh, you can visit uh, the official website www.mctforocd.com. Um, I, I, I like so much this picture since I, I, I think it expresses a, a, a great feeling of trust and hope, uh, the hope of freedom maybe the, the freedom from, uh, from the cage of OCD. And I'm also happy to inform you that on November 7, I'll be giving a one day workshop uh, again with Harvard Medical School and the Center for Mindfulness and Compassion in which uh, I, I deepen the understanding of the model, uh, show videos of real group session and uh, and share some exercises of the program. Um, this is the Embassy for OCD Center in Vicenza, Italy, where we implement the program in the individual and group settings, and we also provide uh, different levels of training with this model. So uh, I think uh, if you still think that some people with OCD cannot benefit from or uh, aren't able to engage uh, in MCT for OCD, I can, show you, I can show you the evidence that can change your mind. So this is the evidence that anybody can learn to meditate. The sitting meditation, mindful stretching, and uh, mindful sitting, sitting meditation, and also body scan, right? Okay, so thank you very much for your attention and thank you for inviting me.